Hey crafters, welcome to Creative Moments by G. I'm G, and today we have a springboard card for you. Maudie and I went looking for an easy, quick card that you could really utilize your patterned paper and really make it quick. So let's head down to the crafting table and let me show you this card. Here is what a springboard looks like. Now, look at the top of it. Do you see how it just has this little bitty piece right here that actually causes it to springboard? Now, there's so many things you can do with this card, but we tried to keep it really quick and easy today. The other thing is you can write your message on the back here. Yes, you can write it here as well. But if you don't want to disturb your design on the front at all, you can always write to the back. So let's get busy and make this card together. The first thing you need to do is create your mat for the back. This does not have your typical card. It's just a mat, and that's what makes it so neat. Now, I want to remind you that the measurements will be listed over on creativemomentsbyg.com. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy this tutorial. So we have our mat, and that's four and a fourth by five and a half. And you want to go ahead and cut two of these because the next one is actually going to be our spring board. So bring in your trimmer or your scoring board, and let's go ahead and get this scored. Now you're going to take it the long way, and we are going to score at two and three fourths. and four and one eighth. And this forms the accordion panel that causes it to be a springboard, right? Well, at least one of the ways it becomes a springboard. So the first thing that we wanna do is turn this part right here because that's where you're actually going to write or decorate on the inside of your card. And we're just going to hold our right hand down Fold towards it, and now fold back. And now bring in your bone folder, and let's get that creased really well. Now, when you crease, just a little tip. Most people crease this top part, but don't forget to crease this back part as well. Now, you can go ahead and lay this down, but what I want to do is give you another tip. I want to go ahead and cut our strips that we have that we're going to put right here on the side. I use those strips as a guide to make sure that we don't go in too close. So let's just look at that. We have already cut some great patterned paper and we are going to have our little panels right here on the side. So let's just go ahead and lay those down. Now remember, we're gonna make two cards today, just to give you an idea of two different versions of this springboard card. Now I am leaving the same distance, top to bottom and on the right hand side. So look at that margin and just kind of make sure that you have the same way all the way around. Now, a lot of people go ahead and they lay down their springboard at this point, but I wanna give you another tip. Let's just go ahead and lay both sides down. That really will be your guide so that you don't get it too close to one side. Just a little tip. Now, once again, making sure that our margins are the same top to bottom and the side. Now you could just leave those panels just like that, but I like to bring in some additional coloring. So I brought in a coordinated cardstock and then I went ahead and embossed it just to give it some more dimension. Let's lay that down. Just going to center it. And now, before 
before you lay this down, if you're going to add, say, a sentiment on the inside, go ahead and do that. It just makes it much easier. And we are going to do that. So let's go ahead and add our sentiment on the inside. And I'm going to keep it about right here in the middle. So I'm going to bring in my Knight of Navy. Tap, tap, tap. Now I want to show you my sentiment. Can you guess, based on this sentiment, what do you think my images are going to be that I'm going to decorate with? Sending you a big squeeze. <laughs> Take a moment and leave a comment before you watch the rest of this video. Okay, the next thing we want to do is lay this down right in between these panels right here. You want to make sure that you leave the same margin. So I'm just going to flatten that and I'm going to see I have about... Oh, I have a little bit over an eighth and a little bit over an eighth. So go ahead and put your glue right here on the back. And you can see how very quickly this card goes together. Okay, let's look at that. Can you see the distance? Because it's white on white, it's hard to see that. But we have a little bit over an eighth on both sides. And we were able to use these panels as our guide. Now the next thing you need to do, if you're using patterned paper, you know how it's kind of flimsy. So you want to go ahead and put a topper on that is going to fit right here on the card. Just like that. Because this square gives, it's not really a square, it's a rectangle, gives this some stability. So let's go ahead and lay our patterned paper down. Now, make sure that if you have directional paper, that you be mindful of that. Because this is not a square. It is a rectangle. So it definitely has a top and a bottom. You don't want to accidentally turn it this way because it doesn't look right. We need it to go from the top to the bottom of the card. Now, we have this laid down, and now we're going to make our little wobbles or our little springs that we put underneath this to cause it to springboard up even more. Now let me show you what they look like. You can create these using some strips of paper. I'm going to show you how to do that. Another tip, if you don't want to create these strips, you can just buy some wobbles at your craft store. And they do the exact same thing as those strips that we're going to make. Just a little bit easier. And they cost some money. So if you're saving money, go ahead and create three strips. And these strips are three-fourths by three-and-a-half. And then we have a bunch of score lines. We need to score at three-fourths, one and an eighth, one and a half, two and a fourth, two and five eighths, and three. Now look at the score lines that we have there. Now let me show you the quick way to fold this. I grab this flat piece right here in the center and I fold down, up, and down. Go to the other side, fold down, up, and down. And there you have it. Folds up in a little square and we have our little box. And now let's go ahead and glue those together. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and take a tape runner, put a little bit of tape right here, just fold it over and then I fold over that one. Let's do another one. Go ahead you can put it on the back side or the front side of this. It doesn't matter. And go ahead and fold it over and shut it. 
And now we have some extra wobbles that we can use. Now let's go ahead and get this put together. Once you have your mat, and you have your little springboard right here, you're just going to add your wobbles right here. We want to go ahead and add our wobbles just like that. So once again, you can use a tape runner or you can use some glue. I'm gonna go ahead and use some glue so that I have a little wiggle room left so I can get them right in the right place. I'm just going to set it up right there. And you only need two right here. I'm gonna move these to the side. I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here and I'm just going to close this panel. Now center this right on your mat. Having the same distance on either side and it should fit all the way to the top and the bottom of the cart. So just hold it there for a second. And look at that. See how it springboards? Now, this is where you can buy your wobbles if you want to and add them instead of making your own little wobble. And now all we have left to do is go ahead and decorate. Now, remember I asked you to go ahead and leave a comment before we got started to see if you knew what we were going to use as an image based on sending you a big squeeze. Let's see if you were right. We are using the stamp set Sweet Citrus. We're going to use some lemons and some oranges. So that's where we came in with Big Squeeze. So we went ahead and we cut some additional circles that we're going to just add flat because we already have a lot going on here, right, with our wobbles. So let's just get those added. Now, you can raise your images on the outside, or you can lay them flat. And because we already have some wobbles in here and we already have this springboard, I'm just going to lay everything down. Maybe I'll, I'll raise up one. But look at these images that I have cut out. I went ahead and I ran them through the embossing folder and then I used the die to cut them out. Oh my goodness, such dimension on these. And so now we have our lemons and our oranges and we have a few leaves. So let's go ahead and lay this down. And I'm only putting glue right in the middle because I'm gonna stuff some leaves underneath. I'm gonna go ahead and put two dimensionals on this one just to raise it up a little bit from the orange. And you know, it's all about how you decorate once you get this quick and easy springboard card made. So we have our leaves and let's just start adding them. I want to see where I want to add them. Okay, and now we just need to add our sentiment. We stamped the sentiment that came with the kit. Went ahead and added dimensionals on the back. So let's just take off the backing and get that added. I'm just going to lay that right across the middle. Add a little bit of glue. Okay, and we have our first card. We just added some gems. This stands up perfectly. Look at that. <laughs> so cute. Are you ready to move on to the next springboard card that we're going to make? And remember I said stay with us because I have another one to show you at the end. So remember what you need to do. You need to go ahead and cut two base mats. 
and that's four and a fourth by five and a half. But one of them is going to be the springboard. So you will go ahead and put your score lines at two and three fourths and four and one eighth. Now, once you have that scored, turn the part where you're gonna write your sentiment if you want it. It's the larger part that doesn't have any score lines. And hold it down on your mat and fold towards your hand and then back. Now bring in your bone folder and give it a good crease. Remembering to crease underneath as well. Okay, now the next thing we do, we add our panels. I've decided to use a coordinating cardstock color that I'm going to use in my image. So I went ahead and I embossed that with this beautiful weave. Look at that. And I'm just going to lay that down on either side. Now, because this has a beautiful embossed pattern, I'm not adding anything else to the top of it. Just going to keep it just like that. Now, make sure that your margins are the same, top to bottom and side. This is the time that you want to go ahead and stamp any sentiment that you're going to use on the inside. Hope your birthday is wonderful. This is going to be a really cute critter card. So, let me show you the critters. Oh, this is the cutest stamp set, and it has dies. I wouldn't want to fussy cut these critters, but you can also get the dies. And so we're going to use this cute alligator crocodile right here, and then this cute bird. So let's go ahead and get this glued down. Now remember, we are using our panels as a guide to make sure that it's centered. That's what makes it so easy when you lay those panels down. You lay both of them down, then you can get it centered. Okay, and there we have it. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead. We would make our little wobbles, our little springs, but we don't need to because we already have two. We need to design the top part right here. Now remember, this is directional. So this rectangle goes from top to bottom in this particular springboard. Now you can make a springboard that's portrait and that is like this, but we are not working on that. We're working on a landscape today. So our cover goes from top to bottom. Now, I'm going to add this patterned paper because it it already has some foliage in the background and I'm going to need that for my critters. So let's go ahead and just get this added and then we will stamp our critters and start using our blends. Now I've already stamped our cute little critters that we're going to use and because we're going to use blends on this paper, it will bleed through. So you want to make sure and have a piece of paper down on your workspace. I'm going to use Old Olive Light and Dark for our alligator and I'm going to use these colors for our toucan bird along with Poppy Parade. So let's go ahead and do our alligator first. Now the way I do it is I like to go ahead and flood the image with the lighter color. So I use the brush nib because it goes much faster. And when you flood it, you're getting it nice and wet so that you can come in and do some shading. Now I 
want to do something interesting, I'm going to go ahead and just dot his eyes with some blue. Just to make him a little more interesting. And now we're going to come in with the dark olive and we're going to do just a little bit of shading. Now, because these are alcohol markers, they will lighten up. But if that's too dark for you, you can always go back in with your light and you can just hit the top area where it blends into the lighter color and that will lighten it up. So we're going to let that lighten up just a little bit and now we are going to go ahead and color our toucan. Okay, and let's go ahead and cut these out. Okay, we're just going to pop these guys out. We went ahead and we used the dies to cut out a tree, to cut out our sentiment and some leaves to decorate. Okay, so let's go ahead and decorate this. We know that we need... Let's just make sure because it is directional. This is the way we need to create our scene. So let's put it right here. We are going to put our tree right here on the side. Now let's continue creating our scene, right? We're going to have our little guy sitting right here. Now you can't have his little feathers go above this line because you need it to fit in the envelope. Now we're just going to add a few little leaves and some flowers. And finally, before we add it to the front of our springboard card, we need to go ahead and add this just right in the center. Okay. Now let's add our little wobbles right here or our little springs. I'm going to bring back in my tape runner. And we're just going to add this right to the front of our card. And just hold it for a second. I'm going to add a few little gems. And look at this card. How cute is this? Yes, it is thicker than a normal card. So you will definitely need to add some additional postage or this is perfect if you're going to a birthday party, slip it in an envelope and you can put it right on your present. You don't have to worry about the postage. This is for that special niece, nephew, grandson, granddaughter, or just your daughter or son. Such a fun card. These critters are so much fun. Now this springboard card is very easy to make. So let's review the cards that we have done. Okay, we have our zesty card and we have our critter card. Look at how cute those are. 
We have this one that I showed you earlier. Have just a little stamp there. We added just a little strip right here. And finally, we have this beautiful card. We used some frames and we added them down flat so that you might not have to add extra postage for this one. Everything is flat. You open it up and you have a wonderful message. Now, you could, if you wanted to, add another little image right here and put a spring underneath it. Certainly, you could do that. But we wanted to try to keep our cards as flat as possible. So take a moment and let us know which is your favorite card. Well, we certainly appreciate your time today. We hope you were inspired and you take a moment to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't. If you're looking for more inspiration, check out our Pinterest and our Instagram account. Oh my goodness, we have so many cards over there. Well, Monty and I want to wish you a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.